So I learned a lot this week. Like when you think you have things under control, you can change on a dime. Learn not to take health for granted. Learn that sparks can definitely start a fire. Learn that it's turkey season when a few friends stopped by and needed to borrow a bandsaw. I learned that you can write on a piece of metal with a piece of rock. And I learned that some of those places with junk piled outside have major creativity going on inside. I started the week by calling our client to tell her that Jamie was injured. I didn't think we'd be able to build the custom handrails that he had designed. He's the real metal worker, not me. I thought maybe we could sub it out or something, but Jamie was insistent, even from his hospital bed, that this thing had to happen and we could do it. Man, I was just supposed to do this metal handrail thing. Um, that was like my next project to do, this really cool mountain scene handrail. And uh, I kind of made some drawings of it. I was getting ready to make a video actually about the handrail, me and Eric were. Well, I couldn't tell him no. So a few good friends, Brett and Chris, stepped in to help. And I'm making a video about how we did it so we could share the story. This isn't a how-to. Oh yeah, I guess I learned there's a story to everything. The first thing we needed to do was get an exact measurement of the railing length. Then we took a little bit off, like 3 30 seconds of an inch, to make sure it would actually fit when it came time to install. We made the outer frames out of two inch square stock metal. We assembled them and then used a really cool jig that Jamie had made a while back to attach the post bases perfectly centered on the leg. It only fell on my foot one time while I was unclamping it. Next, we used a piece of soapstone to make our layout where all of the 5 8 rebar pieces would hit the outer frame. The horizontal pieces were four inches on center. The angled pieces came out to be five and a half inches on center to keep the same spacing on the angle, which was 45 degrees to match the pitch of the roof on the house we were building. We built the angled section first and then used a string line to make marks where the horizontal pieces would cross. Each piece of rebar was measured and cut, some with our metal chop saw and some with a Mataba grinder. We actually went through four cutting discs on this one project. The chop saw cut through the metal faster, but it was slower in some cases to line up the mark with the blade and clamp it, so the grinder was also used a lot. Once each piece was cut, it was held in place and then tacked, some a few times before we were happy with it. I do want to note that we oriented all of the rebar with the solid ribs to the top and the bottom, giving it a more uniform look. Once everything was welded by Chris, who by the way is a great welder, I took an aggressive sandy disc on the angle grinder to clean up all of the welds and splatter as we learned it was called. And finally, we had our first look at a completed section. And you know what? It looked freaking amazing. Time to build two more sections. Evidently, Chris made his shooting targets look like Mickey Mouse. The next major step was to get all of the rust off of this rebar before finishing. It's actually hard to find clean rebar since most suppliers actually store it outside and it rusts. We chucked up some wire wheels and ground and ground and ground. It took almost half a day. And we finished up by hand with some smaller wire brushes to get in all the little crooks and crannies. These rails still weren't ready for finish. We gave them a good sanding and then gave them a good cleaning with some acetone to get any residue or grease off them. You know what really blew my mind on this project? Chris has never eaten at Bojangles. How is that possible? And finally, after two whole days, it was time to put some finish on these rails. We went with a clear satin enamel. This would give the rails a rustic but modern look. You could still see the welds, you could still see the metal, and I thought it looked really cool. We went with three coats of this enamel to give it a nice strong finish.
And then the moment of truth. Did they fit? Is it gonna work? I really didn't know until we put it right in its place. And amazingly enough, they did fit. I almost couldn't believe it actually. It was time to do a little pre-drilling through the hardwood. Then I temporarily fastened the post down with some T25 deck screws till I could find the perfect screw to put them in permanently. Now that we had our confidence with the small section, it was time to tackle the two larger sections at the front of the loft. These were so long that we could not get them up the stairs, so we had no choice but to lift them over the loft edge. This was a four-man job, actually five if you count us, and it was not easy at that. Wow. And just when I thought we were done, I noticed we missed a whole piece in the railing. We'll have to weld that in later. I also noticed that one of the rails was sanded way more than the other. I guess that's what happens when you get two people working on the same piece of art. We had to sand down the second section, clean it all off again, and then we masked everything off in place, put another three coats of finish on this other piece. And I think we're, we're done now. Thanks for watching our video today and I want to say thanks again to Chris and Brett. I really appreciate the help. Turned out awesome and Jamie is getting better so we're really thankful for that. See you next time.